Okay. So we're in the middle of the second paragraph of Isaiah, where he's explaining that even in Gashmi, in the heavenly hosts, and, and the Ike Chiddush is even Tzvah Oretz, the hosts of, of the terra firm of the world. So we see the Koyach Abligvu. We see Hashem's infinite presence in the infinite nature of creation. The, the underlying Chiddush, again, which we said yesterday, the underlying point, which is spelt out I, later in the Maimon in black and white, but it clearly is, is what he's saying all along, is that it's one thing that ain't lay sof. There's one thing that has a source and keeps on producing. Another number, another number, another entity, another, en another entity. That's not the true ain sof. The true ain sof is, and not therefore not expressive of Hashem, himself, who is not just Ainli Sof, but Ainli Tchila. Now, the, 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 the thing we need to get clear, as I mentioned the other day, it's important to mention again, is that the term Ain Sof, therefore, is used in two ways in the Maimur. Ain Sof classically, which means no end, but a beginning, and that goes on Eir. And that's why the Mukabolim, uh, the Rambem Ipano, uh, Menachem Azarim Ipano, and, and Hilal Paracha point out, the term Ein Sof classically therefore refers to the Eir. Now what he's saying now is from the Zohar that it's So the, the, the language of the member was that it's Taka not Mitzad the Eir. The Eir itself is Yeshle Tchila. But since Eir is Me'ina Mohir therefore and the Mohir, the source Atzmius is truly infinite and in both directions, as it were. And in Leitchilo, therefore, the Eir carries that. Okay, these are just words. What does this mean? So again, the Eir is the way the Eibishter chooses to reveal himself. So the nature of Eir per se, revelation per se, means it's reveal, revealing from a source, so it has a beginning. The beginning is the source. But since Eir is Me'in Amohir, what's being revealed here is the Eibishter, therefore the Eir itself reveals God, a God, God, who is truly a of Amitius, which the Maimi uses the language, the true Ein Sof, which means Ein Leitchile, no beginning. And that's in create that's and, and 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 that is expressed in what he produces. And I say they would produce loosely, because there's two two in your name here. Lifne at simtum, as I think I mentioned this yesterday. Lifne at simtum, and even at silos, they're not creations. This is God revealing Himself. So God is revealing Himself and and can be apprehended and seen. The 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 potential viewer is seeing an infinite God, not just ain't soft in the classic sense, extending for living forever, extending forever, being forever in that way, but a, a true appreciation of how he's revealed his presence in such a way that we know him of Ein Leitchila. Where do you see the Nitzchus, however, in creation? So in summary, the Nitzchus in creation is two things. Not only does the creation continue to reproduce itself, but that's Yesh Leitchila. That's Yesh Leitchila. If you want to see the true Amiti is Ein Sof in creation. So the true Amiti in creation is, 
it seems Be'emes only emerges fully in Eilam Hazar. In Eilam Hazar, where there's the sense that we don't have a beginning, we just are. We don't feel any cause that precedes us. It's really in Eilam Hazar that the true Amitius of Ein Sof is revealed. Because we feel that we just are intrinsically, we don't feel a cause that precedes us. That's Ein Leitchila. But Rabbi, that's that's just a hergish of Ein Leitchila. It's certainly not a real Ein Leitchila, right? But he's saying that hergish is only possible. It's an impossible hergish. How could there be such a hergish? If our source was such that the source felt, uh, carried this truth, that it has an origin, then it could not produce anything that doesn't feel the same way. And the fact that the Eir, as he brought down from the Geras HaKodesh, it's the the, the Eir to the Esesvidus, the Kav rooted in in in, in Eir and Sefa that's invested in the Esesvidus, is the creative force in total. And since Eir Me'ina Moir and the Eir and the Moir has Ein Leitchila, therefore it creates that which also feels Ein Leitchila. But if that's the case, then why doesn't the air feel in like Chila and, and the whole Seder Ishtashal is all the way down? Because it's all created from the so Mar, it does, so, from the Ur, which is from the Mar and so on. Yeah, so it does. It does. What what that so what what does it mean, Lamaila Lachura? Lifna at Silas and higher? Again, they're not creations. That is the viewer, the the viewer, what's revealed there is God who has no beginning. That's what's revealed there. So that's like a very big cardinal difference between the Ein Leitchila of Atzilus and Lifne Atzimtzum property, which is the whole point of the Maimed. That's at Ein Sof Amitius is Ein Leitchila. That's the me- its measure, as it were. So there's a cardinal difference between the Ein Leitchila of Ein of, Sof of Lifne Atzimtzum and, and Bia. It starts really in Bria. It does start in Bria to some degree. But really, only uh, only becomes because of the tzimtzum, uh, this idea of 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 the the yeshes of the nivra that, that he feels that he's yesh ma'ayin. Really starts in biyah. It starts in biyah. That's why it's called biyah. But he's yesh ma'ayin. Yitzir asi, but still in elam hazeh. That kind of einle tchila is very different. And what's the difference? The einle tchila of atzilus and lifnei atzimtzum is God is seen there. The moir in the words of the maimer the Oyer allows the Mo'ir to be seen. The Mo'ir is seen. So what is seen? It, the, uh, God who is who's not just in Lisa, but in Lichila. The radical change is that what does he cr- produce? That which is in Lisa and in Lichila in its own hergish. It's not a lie either because it's it's direct investure of the Oyer and Sof, which is in Lichila. So therefore, it has that property. We we learned right. This is that this is the idea that the yesh nivra is really the expression of the yesh hamiti. Why? Because the neshama is rooted in atzmos. That's really the neshama. That's not the yesh nivra. But the, the, the nivra too. The nivra is mekayach creation. Yesh ma'ayin is mekayach atzmos. Not to speak of the neshama. It's talking about the, the yeshes of creation altogether. And therefore, it's a corruption of the Yeshua Amiti. In the words of the Maimah, the Eir Ein Sof, the Maile Madin Ketz, is, is present in, in creation. In the fact, in the sense that it feels that it is the Maile Madin Ketz. It's nothing that precedes me. I am that I am. Plus, plus, the Ribu Nivroyim, and the fact that the Tzva Shomayim is going to say now, as strong as they were the moment they were created, that could even be. Just sort of here, maybe we'll come out as we learn the Ois now. doesn't bring out but maybe it does. That's what we're up to right now. So that's what we're going to see now. So first, he's, he said like this, this is needs to be learned and thought about and I'm much more. This whole Nakuda that he speaks in this is now Koyach versus Poyal. There's one thing to say that the Koyach of Ein Sof 
By koyach means the source. The source. Koyach means potential. That the koyach, that that's present in the world. That, let's rephrase that. It's one thing to say that the ain't sof is present in the world, but koyach has a potential. But then, not manifested, just, and, and then just producing another creation, another creation, again, another number, another finite, another finite, another finite. He's categorically rejecting that. That's the point of the Maimur. It's not so. That the Koyach Ha'ensof is present in the world manifestedly B'Poyom. And again, this Ha'ensof quality, which is this aspect of Ein Le'tchila, of having no cause preceding it. The first point he said was, this was the Kasha Yast over here, how is it possible that even the Koyach of Bligvul should be invested in this world? If creation, if we would say, which is not so, that creation is fundamentally limited from all sides before and after, pre and post has, be, has an end in simple language, then how would you have a Kecha Bligvul even potentially invested in such a finite creation? And since it is, So it will manifest itself, therefore, in creations, which means in creations that carry this true bleak fullness to it. And how is that? He demonstrates, so we see this. Kofishim Mavayish, that's what we're up to, three lines at the top of page, Yudches. Like he says in the Ois. No, this is not the not not should be. This is Reb Marash. Shaloyim shakoya chabligvo bo gam bepoyel banivroyim. It's actualized. Not that they just come from a koya chabligvo. They are fundamentally gvo. We see the bligvo. That's the bepoyel in creation. Ki ilu koya chapel banifolosh. Ki ilu koya chapel benvoshem briach koya. Gvuli, if the actual chayes, you say, that's the kecha pel benifel, in creation was a kecha gvuli, and the bligvulness is this the shoydesh, a bligvul hain disha bakech bulvad, kech slash shoydesh source, as a yisarichli, is chili bani vroim, ben ayim shen ivre bla yom shalacha is that they should get progressively weaker. There should be distinction in creation from today to the next day. Why? Because creation itself is fundamentally limited. So we're going to keep on producing it, but in the world of creation, it's just going to get weaker and weaker. How is it in creation itself? As it goes on to say, Chazakim kiyemi bora. And that Bemis is referring to the Tzvar Shemayim. Harisi b'rishamu yadaposak edo tilis ha-shemayim v'oretz bi bora. No, it goes on both. Oh, there's two sources. Okay, the Shalmi says, on these words, the word bottom when he created them, what's the, the diuk is, the words aren't necessarily all together. It's Ela, this is the chronicles of Shemayim Vodets. What's bottom when he created them? Kiyoyim bottom Teaching us that they are today, like the day they were created. Hainu Shem Chazokim Kiyoyim bottom. I need to, to usually it says it's about the Tzvar Shemaim, that the sun and so on, the celestial beings remain undiminished. But it could also go on Tzvar Oretz in the sense that human beings don't get, no creation becomes weaker with time. Recreate, reborn, reborn are the same, like anew. The Koyach HaYilod doesn't weaken over time. But I said, even, even that which exists in the species and not with the actual the actual uh, 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 the actual body itself. So as Ba'i said, take it for Chayzik Shoyi Ba'yoyim Yibarom Belishinu Klal. So we see in creation it, the unchangingness of creation. 
which shows that the Kecha Blikvul is invested, Bepoel, invested, Mislabesh, Beprimius, Bepoel, in creation. She says, Yeah, Nitzchis, this we say, so here we see the eternity. It's not that this infinite source that is producing finite things, which by nature would become weaker. The finite creation that it produces has this infinite eternal property as evidenced by the fact that it keeps on producing and producing and there's no weakening. Is that kind of clear? You might want to negate that and say no. Creation itself is be'em, it's gvul. So why is it that it's, it's, it's as strong as the moment it was created? That's because creation is every second. Creation is every second. So since creation is every second, it'll, it'll create the next moment, that which is similar, the same, to what you created a moment earlier. So creation itself, be'em, it's not, it's not believable. There's no nitzchis in creation. It's just that the creative force is constant. And so therefore it keeps on producing the same in terms of strength and, 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 and uh, endurance, the same kind of creation. You might want to suggest that. You hear the question? Hello? They see it in sight. The fact that creation, we look at the, at certainly the celestial beings, that they remain undiminished in their power, and again, even the species continue undiminished. That this is not an indication of that there's an actual investor within creation, not that it produces it, but it's invested in it. This infinite koyach, why? Even if they, even without the koyach will invested them, they could still be each day creation as strong as it was the day it was first created. Since creation is every day, so every day creating a finite being inherently limited. Why the next days or the next moment is it? Is it still the, the species or the or the or the heaven? Is it? It's still. Uh, as as powerful as strong as it was at the outset, because being created in you, it's like every day is a new creation. Which of taught forever your word, Hashem stands in heaven. You're constantly bringing creation to being, right? However, that rejects that. It's not so. Even notwithstanding creation, every moment, if the koyach habligvul was not slabish and invested in creation. It would weaken with it, with the passage of time, notwithstanding constant creation. What? Why? How so? And a very important fundamental point coming now. There's a distinct. We have to say. Even though creation is ongoing, it's not the same as the creative force at the very outset of creation it's unlike the Chiddush HaYishon is Kameshu Lacharizeh renewing the old, perpetuating creation, true Yesh Ma'ayin it's not the same perpetuating creation is not the same as creating crea creating, creation, creating creation even though we're talking about perpetually creating but perpetually creating is not the same as initially creating, what's the Raya? Shayomra, an interesting guy. Shayomra Zal, the Medrash says, famous Medrash. Sholus uh, Abiyosi, a Roman matron, As Abiyosi. Now, Kame Yomim, a noble woman. Kame Yomim, Barak Ish Barak Ish How long did it take God to create the world? Oma Laitol, the Lishisha Yomim, six days. He said, what does he do since then? She asked him. He sits and he makes matches. And then the whole story, oh, really? That's so easy to do. I can do it myself. And then makes the matches. There's many versions of the story. And there's people. And the next day they come bruised and beaten and, and so on. But at any rate, if we're going to say that renewing creation is just is the same as the initial creation that should have been his answer 
There's no question what does he do now? His answer is to be. What does he do? Out? Same, same, same thing he did at the very outset of creation. He's constantly creating. That should have been the answer. There's no question. The question is what in Tere Semes? It's, it's a Shaila. So the fact that it's a question, and Molly, that he answers, well, he's not creating. Now he's being Mizavik Zivugim. So it's not the same to renew as it is to initially begin creation. So much so, he's not involved in creation as he was initially. He's involved in something else. And what's that? He sits and he pairs matches. Conclusion, therefore, creation should be weaker. If creation fundamentally is finite, the nature of finitude is it weakens over time. He's, and so constantly creating is not the same as the initial creation. Sorry, Ian, here, but I'll leave my question for another time. Maybe I'll ask her to answer tomorrow. Akoponim, so therefore, we should expect, therefore, to see, you would expect, therefore, to see a weakening in creation. And the fact that we don't, that means that creation not only comes from an infinite source, obviously, to create out of nothing, but that that infinite koyach is nislabish in creation. And therefore, for is evidenced where in all of Ishtaushalas, including Ishtaushalas here, certainly in celestial beings, and even in the creation here that continues Plus, as you said earlier, which we'll recap in the next ice, the fact that we feel is total independence, that's Mamash a of the Mo'i. Incredible. By our biggest problem is that Yeshis is, a, is really the evidence of our greatest, of the greatest truth, the greatest investor in us, our biggest Mila. That we are creations of the Ayin of Abligu. To rephrase that in our void, what that means is our biggest problem is our Yeshis. Is our biggest smile and meaning. Yes, David needs me and my avoid is negated to the whole world. That's that's taking the sheker of the world, talking about the, the Mishkan, the Kurashim, the sheker and making it a Kedesh, making it a board to the Mishkan. How do you transform a lie? A lie is not transformed, a lie has to be negated. It's not true. A lie is exposed and done away with. No, the whole point of the Mishkan is his hapre, taking the lie of the world and transforming it, making the sheker, a kesher, and a keresh. How? You feel independent. You are, you are. So you should know. You know why? Because the Abraham himself is invested in you. It's a corruption of a truth. And you know what that means? You are everything to him. Your mitzvah makes a difference to the whole kavana somebody. That's transforming the lie. That's taking yeshes and 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 making it the keli for the true yesha miti. That's right. Why was a person created? One person and uh, a singular person. Everything else was created in great numbers at the outset. Because chayiv adam loim bebishvili nivra oilam. That's the yesha nivra transformed in expressing the yesha miti. And why do we have this hergish? Because the yesha miti is invested in us. It's a million different thing. And our biggest problem, the tachten shebetachten, which is yeshis independence, therein, not somewhere else, therein lies the deepest truth, our redemption, and the whole purpose, and the deepest emes. The deepest emes is in the deepest lie. Really, it's the only lie, which is the source of all the other lies. Let's conclude. And since creation has has as a strong, as viable, as viable as uh, as viable as uh, as the day they were created, means lapsos invested, not just a source but detached, which would then create diminishing gvul. But the gvul itself is bleakvul. The gvul itself is bleakvul because a koyach 
the Eidin Sof, which is Me'in Amoy, which is Lamay Lamad in Ketz, is Nislabish, where even in Lamata Mata in Tachlis, it's not two in Yonim. It's the Me'in Lamad in Ketz, which means no Kadman, no, and, and no Ila. That's expressed where in the Lamata Mata in Tachlis. Not two in Yonim of, of the Oy. It's one in Yonim. Behind the conclusion, you have Bligvul Nimshik by Shemaim Bar Hashem Lachre at Simtzum. So the Bligvul property is invested where even Shemaim Bar is post Simtzum. For Gam Lachre Lamat Silas, and even after that Silas, Beil Mizbia, the Ad Lamata Betachlis Beil Masias. We just demonstrate. Yep, somewhat clear. Yes, friends. Yeah. Okay, Hazar will learn about it and think about it. <laughs> yeah, the language of the mind again, the Oasis. I don't know. It, 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 it can be confusing, especially this the word ain't soft, how it's how it's used. There's ain't soft stam and ain't soft amitius, and that's the point of the mind. The ain't soft amitius.